Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to do a home network upgrade. So I actually recently moved and I figured that this would be a great time to upgrade my home network. So I've got a few different network components here. Um, so I have a Reolink uh, camera, so I actually got two of these. Uh, I just haven't unboxed the other one. A TP-Link wireless access point, so this is the TP-Link AC1350. Uh, it was like 50 bucks. And um, so both of these devices are PoE, which stands for Power Over Ethernet. Um, and that basically means that you're able to supply power with just an Ethernet cord. So you don't need a separate um, supply of power, so you don't need an outlet. Um, I've actually never used PoE devices, so I'm very uh, excited to learn about it and to set it all up. Um, and of course, if you want to use a PoE device, um, it's recommended that you get a PoE-enabled switch. So FS.com was actually nice enough to send me a PoE switch that I can uh, test out and try. So uh, this is the S1400 24-port um, switch from FS.com. Um, so yeah, in this video, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, open the switch, unbox it, um, configure it, set it up. And you know, the goal is to set it up and get the wireless access point and the cameras running um, with PoE. So if that sounds interesting, if you're interested in learning more about these products, uh, just continue watching and we will uh, get into it. All right, this is the FS.com S1400 switch. Uh, we're about to unbox it. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and open it up. So this is what you initially see. Some styrofoam. Yeah, it looks like we had the user manual here. And let's get to the good stuff. Let's pull out the switch. So it's heavy. It's got some weight to it. It feels good. Uh, decent weight here. Uh, FS.com or FS 24 port gigabit PoE managed switch with 4 SFP. Uh, so yeah, it looks pretty sweet. Uh, let me set this down for a sec. And I'm assuming this is the uh, cable. Alright, so we got some Ethernet cables here. I actually don't know what this is. It looks like VGA to Ethernet. Um, you know, I'm not an IT expert, so I'm not sure exactly what that is used for. Um, this looks like maybe some mounting hardware, or probably so you can mount it in the uh, in a server rack. And here's just the power supply. Just make sure there's nothing else under here. Yep, so there's nothing else in the box. So I'm going to go ahead and open plastic here. This is what it looks like out of the plastic, and we'll get a closer view in a sec. That's the back, just the power supply. Some venting on the sides, fans. All right. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put the switch into my server rack for now. Uh, not sure if it's going to temporarily or permanently stay right here, but for now, and for this video, we're going to keep it right here. I just wanted to provide a closer up view. So it says FS 24 port gigabit PoE managed switch with 4 SFP. Uh, there's a console port, um, indicator lights, and we have the actual ports over here. And on the far right, it says PoE, and there's four additional ports. I want to say they're SFP ports, but I don't really know much about SFP ports and what they're for, but. Um, yeah, that's what I believe they are. And I just turned it around just so we could see the back of it. Uh, it's pretty bland on the back. Very clean looking. And literally all there is is the uh, power supply on the far right. Alright, I'll plug this in. Alright, so let's uh, turn this around and turn it on for the first time. So, I'm just going to pull this out. Switch it around. Should probably put this up here. Just put it on 
the shelf that I have, and I'm going to go plug this in down here somewhere, and let's see uh, what it does upon the initial boot up. Alright, it's plugged in. I see some lights turning on. And we've got a green indicator light there. Power and SYS, S-Y-S. System's blinking. And after a while of blinking, it finally went to a solid green light. So we have solid power, solid SYS. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to try doing is basically um, taking what I have from my old switch and putting it into the new switch. Now I'm just going to start with um, you know, a couple of devices at first. So I know for a fact this wire here goes to my main router. So I'm actually going to pull that out from my old switch. Now just consider this the internet that's coming from the router. And I'm going to plug this into the number one switch or port down here. And for now, I'm just going to plug this green um, cable in, which goes to my computer over here uh, into the switch. And I was reading the instructions, and we should be able to access the config page on 192.168.1.1, I believe. So let's just confirm that we can get this uh, working as expected for now, and then we'll get more advanced as we go. All right, so as you can see here, uh, actually, you might not be able to see. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Uh, we got indicator lights for port one and two. Um, so, all right, let's go check out the computer now. All right, everyone, moment of truth. We're back on my computer now. Uh, I just first want to see if we have uh, internet. So let's just run a speed test, and it looks like we have internet. So there we go. So that's coming, uh, that's going through the switch. So it's going from the router uh, with that blue cable that I showed you and the blue cable is going um, into the switch and then out of the switch is the green cable which is going to this computer that I'm on now alright so that's awesome we have fast internet now let's try um, getting to the admin page so 192.168.1.1 and let's see if that works All right, guys, so I um, actually found the manual online and was taking a closer look. And I think what the problem is why I couldn't originally connect is because my router is configured on 192.168.0 subnet. And this device is on 192.168.1. So what I did is I went to my network settings. Um, so if we go to network preferences, Ethernet, and I'm actually just manually configuring an IP address for my Mac, which is connected to the switch. So I just said, let's make my Mac have this IP address, 192.168.1 on the dot one subnet. And um, we should be able now to access the switch on 192.168.1. Um, so let's try that. Okay, so now we're prompted with, uh, so we're connected to it. Now we just need to give it the credentials of admin admin. And that's right in the, um, the user guide. All right, and we're in. So this is uh, this is the first time I'm ever seeing this. So just bear with me. Um, I'm going to be learning uh, just as much as you guys are. So it's in Chinese. So we need to switch it to English up here, so I can read it. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, this is looking pretty cool. So I think the first thing I'm going to want to do is change the, um, I guess the subnet of it to 192.168.0. Now I'm not sure how to do that, and I'm not sure if uh, you know, I'm using the right lingo because I don't do this uh, on a daily basis, but uh, I'm gonna stumble around and see if I can figure out how to change that. So basically, yeah, we wanna change this IP address. So let me see, let's call the host name FSPOE switch. Apply, hope it doesn't have to restart. Um, Let me try this one more time. Yeah, I think I couldn't have spaces in there. That's my guess. Okay, so we have FS switch. All right, so I stumbled around here and I found under layer three or L3 config, there's VLAN interfaces and IP addresses. So I clicked that and we want 
IP address here. So let's go ahead and try to edit it. It does say my um, IP address modification may interrupt your web management, but that's all right for now. So I'm going to make this IP address 192.168.0.1. Uh, hmm, maybe one one one, and let me just kind of take browse here, make sure I don't actually have anything that's using one one one. I don't think I do. Nope. Okay, so that should be fine. Let me close that. Okay, so let's try this and hit apply. Connection was reset. Now that's to be expected. So I'm gonna to have to change my IP or let it use DHCP. So let me go back to my network preferences here. And I wanna configure this using DHCP. So now it's gonna use my router, which is 192.168.0. And I think if I just hit apply, it should uh, update and give me a new IP address. So let me just make sure we have internet. Yep. All right, so now let's try our new IP that I just changed it to. Dot zero dot one one one. Okay. All right, so now we're in, it's on our network. Uh, our router's talking with it. So um, in theory, should see it in here. All right, so it hasn't shown up on the router page yet, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, let's just kinda, we'll go through what we have in this um, interface. So device status, device info, interface state. So here we go, we see all the ports that are plugged in. So uh, port one, I'm gonna take a, a glance over and we can see we have gigabit speed there. Uh, port one is the internet. So basically coming from my router um, and then this is connected to my computer and um, in a second I'm going to plug in um, the wireless access point and the camera and we should see those light up and I also want to confirm that you know it's actually powering it um, I want to make sure there's no additional configuration needed to um, get the PoE working all right interface flow not quite sure this just looks like some more detailed information about each individual port which is really cool and useful um, to some people, but probably uh, not me at the moment. Um, MAC address table, a lot of this, um, you know, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not too familiar with, but uh, I'm learning. Optic module info. All right, so that was device status. Let me, I'm trying to collapse that. Basic config, we already looked at this. Port config, this looks like, uh, where we can set up maybe some VLAN type information. Not sure though. Let's take a look at L2 config. So there's a, t here's where you'd set up the VLANs. All right. So there's a ton of, ton of stuff in here. A lot more than my uh, old uh, Juniper switch that I had. Uh, it's presented very nicely. Uh, I think probably with my old switch, a lot of these features I would have had to do um, using the command line but uh, it seems like everything you could want to do uh, is accessible here. Um, trans config, yeah, so I'm not gonna go through all this mainly because I don't understand uh, all of it. Um, but yeah, I kind of just wanted to give, you know, a, a brief overview of, uh, you know, from uh, the everyday person that wants to get a PoE switch that doesn't really work in IT, but who's interested in using PoE devices, just wanted to uh, show you uh, you know, the process of how it works. Um, I'm just seeing if there's maybe an update for the software here. Uh, I'm not sure it doesn't, it's not prompting me to update it. So I'm not gonna update it at this moment. All right, so next I'm going to plug in um, the PoE devices and, and see what happens. All right, everyone, here we go. Here we have the uh, TP-Link wireless access point. So, here we have the port for the ethernet. I'm gonna plug it in here. All right, and I'll just put this here for now. And in theory, 
this should be powered by the PoE device or the PoE switch. So when I plug this in, uh, we're hoping to see the indicator light turn on that it's getting power. So I'm going to plug this into port three right here. And there we go. So that's confirming that that power is being uh, supplied over the ethernet cable. Um, hopefully you can see that light there. So it looks like it turned on. I'm just going to take a quick look on the computer to make sure we see the port there. And I want to make sure that I can access the, the wireless access point. And it looks like we have an indica indicator light here. PoE uh, is turned on, looks like, for that particular port. So yeah, port 3 has the orange indicator. Alright, so I plugged in the um, wireless access point, which is uh, using PoE. So if I go to interface state, looks like it logged me out. Admin, admin. Okay, we see the third one here. That is the uh, wireless access point. And I'm trying to find something that indicates that it is using PoE. I'm not sure where I might find something like that. Maybe there isn't something like that, but maybe PoE manager, no. All right, I also wanted to check to make sure the switch is up and running. So I happen to know the address of that. So there it is, TP-Link up and running. Um, I don't know if I know the password for this. Admin. There we go, so we're in. All right, that's being powered by the, uh, the new switch. This is awesome. All right, next device up is the RioLink camera. Now I have, I've never used a uh, PoE camera like this before, so I'm not even sure what to expect the first time I turn it on, but uh, uh, I guess I'm expecting to see some lights and then somehow I'll interact with it on my computer. So let me plug in the ethernet cord here and let's go ahead and put this in port four. And we should get an indicator light there. And it looks like there's a different colored light there. Maybe it's still setting up for the first time. All right, so we just plugged in the camera. Now let's go take a look at the device status. All right, so it shows us connected. All right, so the camera is set up and it's working. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this, but uh, I'm using an app on my phone and I can live, I can see a live stream of uh, the image. Now I'm just using the default software that came with this camera called RioLink. Uh, I should be able just to use any camera software uh, that I want and use this. Um, so I'm going to spend some time experimenting with different um, camera software. But for now this is great. This is uh, telling me that everything's working just fine. Uh, this is awesome. All right, this video is getting a little bit long, um, so I'm gonna cut it off, but in the future, I wanna talk about um, setting up some VLANs, so, or maybe just a VLAN. So for example, I wanna put those RioLink cameras uh, on a separate VLAN so they you know, are totally isolated from my home network. Um, and yeah, so that'll be in a future video, and just wanted to thank uh, FS.com for letting me try out this uh, Switch. Uh, I like it so far. Uh, it's really simple to, to get set up and running and uh, very smooth UI and interface. And I forgot to mention, it's very quiet. I don't hear it at all. It's whisper quiet uh, compared to my old Switch. Uh, so initial impressions, uh, I'm a fan, I like it. Um, so yeah, just um, look out for a future video and uh, uh, where I plan to uh, get, dive a little deeper into the config as I get more familiar with it. Uh, mostly the plan is to set up a, v a VLAN. All right, thanks for watching.